Hi everyone, this is Dimitri Pragmatic with MarketChameleon.com. I wanted to demonstrate in this video a ratio put spread. I'm going to use SPY as an example and I'm going to show you on the options chain. I think the best way to do it is kind of demonstrate the, the payout diagram at expiration and show you the thought process behind it. So I just went out right now currently the December 20th expiration is 33 days away. SPY right now is trading around 36.87. So let's just take a look at a uh, setup of a one by two. Now there are two different ways you could do it. You could buy one put and sell two two puts on a different strike, or you could uh, do it the other way: sell one put, buy two puts on a on a different strike. Um, so let's just start out with I'm going to start out with uh, selling an out of the money put. So let's just go here over to the 298 strike here. So the stock is 306.77. I'm going to sell the 298 put over here for $2.83. So I'm clicking on that and generated a December 298 put selling for 283. And let's buy two puts below here. Um, let's just do this uh, for illustrative purposes. I'm just going to take the 289 put here. So here's the 289 put. I'm going to just, now this is a traditional um, vertical put spread, but I'm going to change the ratio. So I'm buying two of these buying two of these for dollar 61 let's load the payout diagram here and take a look at what this looks like now here it almost looks like you're you're losing almost anywhere you go um, because at first we're paying out a debit for this put spread so we're paying 283 and we're receiving <clears throat> I'm sorry we're receiving 283 for selling this put but we're paying a dollar 61 twice on the 289 which results in a 39 cent debit. Now, if I expand this, I'll show you how this diagram looks like to the downside. So what happens here is <clears throat> you, if the stock continues to go lower, lower, and lower, at some point here, the, that second put that you bought kicks in, and then you will start making money over here. Now, sometimes what people will do is uh, set this up where they receive a credit. So the diagram will look a little bit... Um, similar to this but it'll shift up a little bit higher so maybe you want to receive an initial credit in case the stock sits there and floats higher so let's see if i'm just going to raise this strike a little bit let's just go up to like the 300 strike where it's worth a little bit more i'm going to rerun this diagram here so now you could see here over here we're only collecting two cent credit but if the stock just sits there and goes higher this strategy didn't cost you anything if it floats a little bit lower I'm just going to expand it to 10% um, either direction so if it floats lower here your max loss is right here at your long strike at the we're at the 289 strike over here and then if it continues to go lower and lower that other um, put kicks in and you'll start making money and the idea here is that well you're not paying up right away if you just bought a put you know and out of the money put you're you're paying up right off the bat so if the stock just sits there you're going to decay so an alternative uh, to this strategy would be or a possible alternative is either you just buy the put spread um, if you're looking for a very big down move potential very sizable down move over here if it breaks through or you just buy a put which obviously your de debit will be much higher and if the stock sits there you're going to decay more now let's try a reverse of this and I'm just going to close this. And <clears throat> instead of um, selling selling one put, buying two, let's see if we uh, bought one put and sold two, right? So over here, and we could also do this, by the way, for a credit. So let's just say um, that I think SPY right now, it's a little bit overdone. There's a big rally. It's due for maybe a pullback, 5%, 10%, whatever it is. And then whatever your opinion is and then you you would want to um you know profit off the pullback but you don't feel like it's going to really crash through you know it's just due for a pullback and if it really does crash through and it just keeps going you probably would buy it anyway at some point so let's see how this would look like in that situation so i'm going to first i'm going to buy the 300 put looking for maybe like a $15 pull, let's say pull back from here and I think that's as far as it's going to go so I'm going to just say I think if it pulls back it'll go right up to the 290 so then 
what I'm going to do is just click on the 290 bid here. So now I'm buying the 300 put for 326. I'm selling the 290 put for $1.70. Except I'm going to do now a one by two because I think that's where it's going to stop. And if it goes lower, then I don't mind actually, you know, having to own that stock if it just closes lower from there. Um, so that's where the one by two comes in. So here I'm trying to do this whole strategy for credit. So you see here, I'm paying 326 and I'm selling this put for $1.70 twice. Let's take a look at what that looks like at expiration here. And so here's the diagram here. So over here, we see that if we're, we're taking in 14 cent credit, so if the stock just kind of hovers here, goes higher, and we're wrong about the pullback, it didn't really cost us anything. We put it on for 14 cent credit, and that's what we're going to keep. <clears throat> if it if the stock does pull back and reaches our target price, that's our max gain over here at the 290. So you see here, um, that's our max gain if we're correct and just pulls back right to that to that strike. And anywhere in between, you could see here that's the your profit line. Even if it goes through, our profits start going down. But over here, I'm just going to expand now the graph 10% around and as you can see here now that if SPY falls below 280 that's where you start losing again you know the strategy then assumes you're assuming that it doesn't go down that far right that's probably in your in your opinion that would be a little bit too far for you so that's how you would structure this strategy of course if you think that there's potential to go even lower then you would have to um you know fix your strike prices and, and structure it in a little bit different way. So this is that situation where you think, <clears throat> I think we're due for a pullback to the, and over here, you know, I just picked, I don't know, like a 5% pullback from here. That's to the 290, 290 strike over here, 5%. And in this situation, that would be your max gain over here. If you're wrong and it floats up, then this strategy didn't really cost you anything because we brought in a credit of 14 bucks. That's what you get to keep. If you're wrong and it just crashes through, then that's where you start to lose, right? Right over here below two, 280. Um, that's where you start to lose. And let me just take a look at the theoretical value of this. So here, based on history, this isn't, this is a pretty good price. You'd be willing, you're collecting credit now, but based on historical distributions, um, your end value would have been a plus 53 plus 53. Um, now, let, let me show you one more thing, what this would look like if you go very far away, because what happens is you are short Vegas. So this, this is what it looks like at expiration. Um, I'm going to show you what it looks like if you did it further out. And even though this graph looks like this at expiration, if, if the stock starts moving down Prior to expiration, you do have a Vega risk. So your graph will actually look a little bit different than this. So let's just go out to something further out. And let's do something like, uh, I don't know, over here. So now we're going out to September 20th. So this is 220 days away, right? And let's do the same thing. I'm going to bring in a credit. So let's just say uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to buy the... 300 put for $15, right? 52 cents. And now I'm going to sell and I, and I want to bring in a credit. So let's just say I want to bring in a credit and, and I'm going to use the same to the 290, right? So let's sell the 290 strike. So I'm selling two of these, right? Buying one 300 put for 1552, selling two of the September 18, 220, um, 290 puts, two of them. For 1255 so I'm gonna bring in a credit let's see what that looks like at expiration so you see here at expiration it's very high how this graph looks like um, you know you if it if the stock just goes up you're gonna keep this nine dollars 58 cent credit at expiration if it goes down this is your max gain at 290 and then you know if it goes below the 270 in this situation that's where you start losing money at expiration but this is what happens if if the stock goes down and we know what as the stock goes down implied volatility goes up let's take a look at that and i'm going to increase 
Now, what we're going to do is let's assume that implied volatility increases by like three clicks, right? So I'm just going to go here. Let's just go to 21 on both. Right, so you could see here, I increased the implied volatility and we're short 99 vega. And let's see what this looks like if this happens prior to expiration. Let's just say I'm going to go out till January 2nd, right? So this is well before expiration. So January 2nd, I'm going to redraw that graph. So you could see here, you see here, you're actually losing down here, right? Because now you're short vega. So where that blue line is, even if it reaches your best spot over here prior to expiration, because you're short vega, they haven't expired. You sold two options, bought one. And as the stock gets closer to your short strike and implied volatility goes up, you start, you start losing money on that implied volatility. So that's really the caveat over here that even though at expiration, this, if it reaches this point, it looks great. But if the stock, if you do it very far away, the stock starts, starts going down, implied volatility goes up. As you could see here on the blue line, at that point, you're actually still losing money, right? You're still losing money because you're short that vega. Um, so that's one thing to, to consider when you're doing this strategy. You know, some of your other risks here over here, we also see, um, as you go out further, the midpoint of this strategy is 976, $9.76. Cents. The bid is 958. So you have, you know, 18 cents there of, um, away from the midpoint and you always want to try to get your execution as close as you can to the midpoint price. Uh, hopefully this was helpful and see you guys in the next video. Bye.